Jurgen doing. This is this this is the first lecture. It'll be on HTML. Josh and I will be taking this lecture. Yeah, I think it's past perfect time, and I think we can start. So before we begin, I mean, uh, the HTML's full form is hypertext markup language, or something. I mean, like you you can in like just know, like people people might ask this. And like this is essentially like the most basic building block of any website, and every website needs it. Even like even like during the semester, we'll be teaching me like frameworks like React, and uh, even then like HTML still is the basic building block, and it still like is an integral part of it. It just like there are just different ways of building the website, and like more efficient ways. Uh, and like we we'll, we'll be learning about CSS, which is uh, which is used to style HTML because HTML just gives like a very like bare bones kind of a structure to the website. Uh, and apart from the G, uh, JavaScript, which is JS, uh, is used to add functionalities uh, so that like you can maybe like maybe use some buttons to do something, maybe like access some data, and you know just make just making the website way more useful and not just like a static one. So. Kind of an uh, like I'll be throwing like an, like an open ended question. So, what do you see in a website? I mean, um, as in like what kind of components can you witness in a website? You can answer this in the chat, or maybe you can just like shout out, like uh, you can unmute yourself. Yeah. Chat bots, text, yeah, buttons, yeah. Images, yeah, that, that's like a very basic part. Yeah, makes sense. We can also see like uh, things like links, uh, which is which, which is pretty integral apart from like text. I think uh, linking uh, gives you like a dense website. Uh, apart from the like forms, buttons, yeah, paragraphs, yeah, animations, yeah. I, I think for the basic part, you can just say like things like images, text, links, you know, maybe some buttons, yeah, videos, definitely. Moving on, uh, so this is like the basic HTML skeleton code, uh, and like it's mainly divided into four components. The first, the first line is the doc type HTML. It just defines for the computer that, that this will be an HTML document, uh, so that like it can like read it in that sense and actually understand like deploy it as an HTML file. Then we have the uh, HTML tag. We will get into what tags are, and basically these are like four kind of tags. Uh, these are these are uh, four like one of the four tags. So uh, these are four tags, and then HTML tag is basically the contain the most big container, and like it 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 contains everything that would go in. Then we have the header tag. It contains it contains the metadata for the page. Metadata is basically uh uh metadata is basically stuff that isn't like shown on the website. Uh, it is stuff like keywords for for SEO which is the search engine optimization or maybe linking like uh, CSS style sheets. You don't need to like know, know this right now. We'll we'll get into this in the future. And then the body tag is basically where all the content goes in, where like your images, links, everything that we just discussed goes in. Uh, so like you can see that you can see it like in this image that this is like a basic structure of what all goes in. Then you. You can see that the the body tag is where all the actual content goes in, and um, similarly the metadata goes in the head tag in, in the in the head tag. Yeah. Also, like uh, if you're using VS Code, uh, you don't need to type everything all, all of this out. You can just like first like uh, you need to like make a file HTML file like with dot HTML as extension, and then you can just type HTML colon five and then press enter, and all this uh, basic skeleton will be there. Uh, you can also type exclamation and then press enter. That also does the same thing. If you're using Atom, uh, you can just type HTML and hit enter, and it'll do the same thing for you. And you don't, you won't need to, you won't have to type it out. Yeah. So getting into tags, tags is basically uh, the tags is basically the structure that we use to make anything. Uh, this this tag for header, this tag for paragraph, everything is defined by a tag. It could be links, it could be images. So, and, and a generalized pattern of tag is uh, an opening tag with the tag name and then a closing tag. But there are some exceptions and not every tag will have a closing tag. And uh, in the end, we'll, we'll be having a demo and uh, I'll talk about uh, this like more and more there. Uh, so we have the header tag, which is which goes from H1 to H6. And uh, 
similarly we have the paragraph tag which is the which is p and it just like different forms of formatting and then we have the list tag which is uh, and uh, under list we can have two types of list which is ordered or unordered so ordered would be like you can have numbers or like letters like one to three or abc and unordered could be like just bullet points and then under the ol or ul tag you, you have to use li which is a list item to list each item and then we have the div tag uh div tag with just HTML won't do much. Like when we learn about CSS uh, and and more frame and more frameworks, we'll uh, you'll be learning about how like divs actually help you style the uh, style the code better and make it make it easier for you to actually like, style the whole website by defining classes or ID. Again, like classes and ID is something we'll get into deep like in in like uh, in, the, in the coming lectures. And yeah, so H one to H six are basically different sizes of the of the headers and we'll be going over this like again in the demo also, yeah so we just talked about that there's they're like images right so we have a specific tag for image and this is one of the examples that doesn't have an, uh, doesn't have a closing tag it kind of like closes itself on its on its own and there are two main attributes that this uh, image tag has which is src which is source and alt which is alternative text so source basically contains the file path to the link of the image, and you and you should, you need to make sure that the image is under the same directory as your HTML file. Also, the alternative text is the text that will be shown in case the image is not found or there is some form of error and the image can't be uh, is isn't is not able to be deployed on the website. Then we have the link tag. Link tag is basically if you want to link, link any form of text. To a different website, which is pretty necessary necessary for any website for you to build. There are definitely like a lot of links for, for you to make a website actually informational. So this is the anchor tag. The A stands for stands for anchor, and the href is one of the attributes which contains the link to the website that you actually want to point it out to. And then this does have a closing tag, and between the opening and closing tag, you can you can have the text which will be linked. In, in our case, this is checkout WDB. Yeah. And it, it's basically the content that is shown on the screen. Yeah. Now, Josh will be going over the second half of the slides. All right. Sounds good. So moving forward um, past the link tag, next we have um, buttons. And so an example of how a button would look inside your code is here. It's specified pretty simply by just button and um, the closing button tag as well. And inside them, um, there's a onClick attribute. And this onClick sort of specifies a specific function that you want to happen once you click this button. Um, we will get more into what functions are and how to write them on your own once we go through like JavaScript um, in later lectures. But just know for now that these functions can really specify any kind of um, behavior that you want uh, to happen once you click these buttons. And of course, within these tags, we have um, some text which can be displayed on this button. And so um, some special cases for, bus, uh, for buttons, you can use a link or anchor tag to wrap around a button. And this is useful to be able to redirect users um, to a different link um, when they click this button. And um, you can put anything, anything inside the button tags that you want um, to display on your website. And a good example of this would be here, there is a, classic button um, in HTML, go to web dev at Berkeley site. All right, moving forward and um, to the input tag. So sometimes on your websites, you would like to be able to take some input from the user, um, whether it be a uh, user information or um, maybe like a search query from a user. And um, the input tags really help with this type of um, uh, with this type of behavior. And 
um, to specify this, simply write input and um, the, a number of different attributes. First, I will note that this is actually one of those exceptions that you can have to having a closing tag. Um, with inputs, you really don't need a closing tag. Um, it's possible uh, to include one, but um, in shorthand, you can simply just put a slash at the end of the opening tag and it will, uh, HTML will know that this is all that's necessary to specify an input. There's several different attributes that are inside this tag. Um, the first of which is the type. Um, there are many different types of inputs that you can have on your website. I'm sure you can probably think of many different examples, but some are like um, file inputs, text inputs, um, even like um, button inputs, sliding inputs. Um, basically, if you have any need for it um, on your website, someone has probably already thought of it and implemented it inside um, HTML. And so the next attribute here is the name attribute. This basically is a identifier for the input. Um, we probably will uh, sort of go over this in the future, especially when we talk about like um, being able to submit information and send information across different um, uh, websites. But in essence, when you wanna submit your input, uh, let's say you wanna get the input from your user, this is how you'll specify um, the information and sort of correlate it to what input it was on your website. And then finally, the value uh, attribute, pretty self-explanatory. You can put anything inside of it. It's basically just the default or placeholder text um, for your input. Uh, and there are a wide arrangement of other um, attributes that you can specify for these tags, but um, for now, these are several of the simplistic um, attributes for this. All right, and then moving forward um, to forms. So forms um, basically are a combination of different types of tags. And so um, this means that it is like a container for on your website for um, some kind of um, uh, user input that you want to collect from the front end. And so uh, a good example of this is shown below inside the code. Um, you have your form tags and then within the form closing and opening tag, you can have some other structure. And in this case, um, it correlates directly to what you see on the right, um, you know, paragraph tag to uh, enter your name and then the input um, and then the password you put as well. And so um, basically anything can go inside the form, but it is pretty much always gonna be used for getting user input. And so that's why it is uh, commonly paired with the input tags as well. Um, there is a special type of input tag that's called submit. And this will tell HTML basically to render a submit button on your website. Um, as you can see on the right, there is a submit button which will correlate directly with this input type of submit. Um, once we get more into sending events and like information, uh, we can probably go over what exactly happens behind the scenes when you click the submit button. But in essence, it just takes this information on your website um, and sends it as some sort of uh, encapsulated form to, uh, to wherever you want it to go. And So at this point, are there any questions on like inputs or forms or any of the other uh, tags that we have gone over in this past lecture? All right, what are some non-text inputs? Um, yeah, a good example of a non-text input could be like a file input type. Um, have you ever had to upload a file onto a website? That's uh, likely what's going on in their HTML file. Um, another type could probably be something like a slider. 
um, if you want to have like some sort of continuous selection from like zero to 100, for some reason, you can have um, that kind of input for, uh, for your users. And I encourage you, if you are still uh, interested in the different types of inputs, you can actually pretty easily look up um, the entire list on, uh, on Google. It will be very, it's very long and extensive, but um, yeah, it's a good way to get yourself familiar with HTML tags and uh, I guess the possibilities that you can uh, use on your website. And next I see what would happen if you clicked submit here. Um, well, I, I assume that you'd want um, the user to, um, oh, I see, it's already been answered, but yeah, uh, nothing right now because it's just purely front end, but once we implement some, um, some JavaScript code, it'll probably submit to, and you can uh, specify where you want to listen to uh, the submission, but uh, you shouldn't worry about that for now, but it will submit uh, the information to where you want it to go. And let's see. I see one more question. Do you need JavaScript to save or use user input? Um, yes, pretty much. Uh, HTML is the display. It's what the user sees, but it doesn't do a very good job of handling um, any sort of logic, any sort of communications between um, websites or web apps. So we will be going the, uh, over like communication between these things um, in future lectures. But yeah, for now, HTML is purely front end. Mm -hmm. Will there be any final questions? Um, all right, seeing that there are none, we can move forward to our demo for today. Um, Kartik will give a good demo on um, sort of creating your first HTML file and rendering different uh, HTML tags um, on your own. We can actually take a 10 minute break and then we can reconvene at 7.10, 7.12. I mean, in the meantime, anyone can still ask questions in the chat or something like that, and I'll be happy to answer. But yeah, feel free to take a 10-minute break. Um, yeah, after that, we'll be going over a demo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we will be covering classes as in the future, like when we go over CSS, we need classes to actually attribute the designing to multiple elements at the same time, or even like just structuring similar elements with the same styling. Yeah, so what's the difference between ID and name attribute and input tag? Josh, do you want to take this? Um, sure. Uh, ID tag is probably used more for CSS. If you want to style um, the CSS file, we'll look for ID tags, um, sorry, ID attribute in your tags um, to specify which, um, which elements on your screen that you want to uh, apply these styles for. But the name attribute is used more for um, when you're looking at the data. So let's say you receive some data from the front end, but um, it will be in some some kind of object or list. And so you don't really know what, um, what data corresponds to what input. And so that's what the name attribute is helpful for. So if you get like someone's name, their email, and like some random numbers, like 
15, um, you know, one, two, three, four, five, you don't really know off the top of your head what these numbers will correspond to. But perhaps if you have the name as like age and password, then those, uh, then it will be a lot more clear um, what you're, what you are receiving from the user. Yeah, so in JavaScript, like um, you can access like elements on like multiple bases. Maybe you want to get element by ID or by class. Uh, so ID is definitely there and you can, you know, manipulate and what it, like uh, do what, what you want out of that element by accessing maybe some particular element by its ID. If you, if maybe it's something so specific that there are in like multiple, uh, multiple ele elements with the same thing that you want to do with it. Also IDs have to be unique for each element and classes are uh, basically the opposite of it that you can have multiple elements of the same classes. We will get into all of this in the CSS and JavaScript lectures. Yeah, we'll be happy to answer. No, we're just taking a 10 minutes break till 7 12. You can ask questions if you want. All right, I think you can just start a little bit early. Um, I'll share my screen. Let's see. I'm gonna give like a short demo. It's gonna like go over like everything that we just discussed. Hi. Yeah. So basically, uh, I'll walk you through it. 
So you open a folder uh, where you want to ha have this file made. So I'm opening this folder and then I just go in and make a new file with the, with the extension .html so that it's an HTML file file. And then I think the I think I just told you that you can have the skeleton code ready just like that. Um, this is a way to do it. Yeah. You can also do it using HTML two and five. Anything works, both of them are the same. Yeah. Also something that we didn't go over. So head has this title tag, which is basically the title that you see over here, the title of the web page. You can see maybe then before uh, I can just like show you how to actually deploy it right now. And then you just save the file. There are multiple, like there are two ways. Like, I'll show I'll show like both ways. And then you go in your folder where your file is. And then, then just click it. It's as simple. But the thing is, so when I save my file here, I'll have to refresh it here to actually see the changes. So a better way would be to add an extension, which is I think go live. And you just click on this. It basically does the same thing. The only difference is that like whenever I maybe demo it, I'll save it and the changes will be reflected like on the spot. Yeah. So I can start maybe the H1 tags and like I'll I'll be in, in the order that I top them. So oh, H1, um, you can see the difference, the sizes. Also, you don't need to type up the angle brackets. You can just type up the name of the tag and VS Code will automatically uh, complete it for you with the closing tag as well if the tag needs it. Yeah. If we save it and check it out, this is what we get. So header one is the biggest one. This might like be a bit unintuitive, but H1 is the is the biggest header and it goes down to H6, which is the smallest one. And then, yeah. So one of the closing, uh, okay, we can do a color of that. So you can just type raw and it'll give you like a bunch of random words. This la these are Latin words. Uh, and it, it's like a dummy uh, text for you to actually like test out stuff, how it's looking. So this is how it looks. And maybe uh, if you want to add like a bit more space after header six, what we can do is you can add a BR tag, which is brave. And this is one of the tags that doesn't need a closing bracket, uh, that, that, that doesn't need a closing tag. So you can see that there's like more space after it. Another tag similar to this is the HR tag, which, is, which gives you an, uh, an horizontal line. And it also doesn't require you to have like a closing tag and you can see the horizontal line over here. Yeah, moving on. Um, make a, I can almost say like the different types of lists, I guess. So, I think this is enough. Uh, since this was unordered list, you, you can see like bulleted, uh, three bulleted items. Um, this is what we wanted. Similarly, if you wanted to order we, the OL tag, can help us out here. You need, you need to do the LI list item for each new item that you want. And put in your list each new point. Yeah. My bad.
and you can see like a number just over here. Yeah. And you can go forward to um jack is that order or just like the amount of friction. And this will look better. Maybe I'll put it right there. Getting to the good part, I think uh, this is the anchor tag, which is basically the basically links your like links the text to any website that you want to. Links, links to the link that you just specified and there's a tool uh, so so the issue is that like, I, I think like it's like an issue for me I, I guess i would want this to open a new window and there's a there's a there's an attribute to that which is the target attribute basically you can see blank what this does is you can now uh, when you when you click on it it'll, it'll open it in a new tab which doesn't and your and your original tab still exists your original window still exists yeah so and then You can see a button over here. Uh, so the problem with the button is we can't add much functionality with just HTML. So you can see that button has like an on click function and, uh, and an on click attribute. And this basically takes in a function which uh, which gets executed when you click on the button. But right now, since we uh, don't have it, JavaScript with us, uh, we can't do much with the button. Otherwise, you can do multiple things, like maybe uh, maybe giving an alert, which is like asserting an alert, and maybe an alert pops up on your window. And like multiple things, I think it's an endless. The button can do a lot of tasks. Uh, then getting the input tab, input. So this is good. Uh, input tag is uh, another one which doesn't require you a closing tag. So. Uh, the first one is basically a text tag, and this basically gives you an empty space where you can open the text up when you want, and then be, yeah. when you refresh it, it resets because we we are installing the information right now, and which is again done by JavaScript and the like future frameworks that we're gonna go over in the in the coming lectures. Then maybe going over to multiple input 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 tags. So text, what whatever is that? So this basically lets you choose anything from, from the whole like RGB combinations, I would say. Uh, this is this is really cool. And then you have the video you know, button, I guess, and you have the chat chat box. Chat box as well. Okay. This is the radio button. I think this would be pretty useful and you know, like when you want to like make like an MCQ thing, uh, MCQ kind of a thing, or like any form of like very, very, very neat buttons, or like uh, maybe give the user choice. And this is the checkbox, like a different form of like button that you can do for the user to decide between maybe multiple stuff. Yeah. And then also, like, I don't know if you noticed, but like if I just click on tab over here. It like auto computes auto computes for me, and then uh, that's it. And then we can we can on the tag and then make a form. Yeah. So form here requires an action, but like again, form like the action is something related to JavaScript and like what you want to do with the data. But again, we're gonna skip that for now. Maybe we can just do like a class attribute. 
on one which can be used maybe style in the future or something like that. So, um, I, I'll be creating like a simple, simple form. First name. Yeah. Then as George like George explained, there's like special input type which is the submit button. Uh, and this automatically makes for you like a submit button. Maybe 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 the developers made it because like the submit button was just like too useful and they just like added that as a as an option. And then you can see that there's like a Literally, like a submit button over here with uh, with you and like with with like two text fields, one for the first name and one for the one for the last name. So maybe you can add like new fast or email address or like multiple things. Yeah, I think this is the end of the demo. If you guys want, maybe I can like give you the demo code if you want to go over it. But I would I would suggest maybe like trying it out or trying it out on your own and you know, like just going over like. Over the internet and just figuring out things. I think web dev in general like requires like a lot of, you know, just searching, it's searching stuff on your own. Uh, it, it's it's a really vast space, and then you just need to figure out, uh, in like the specific thing that you want. Uh, yeah. Josh, um, we can hang. This is this is basically the end of the lecture. If you guys wanna leave, I think you can. You guys can leave. Uh, we'll stay around for like five. Like, if you guys have any, any more questions. Oh yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, we we do have one thing. Announcements. So homework zero is due on September nineteenth, which is Monday, and homework one is due on September twenty first, which is on Wednesday. Apart from that, we have our social this Friday. So pull up, like we, we can chat about like fun stuff, maybe some maybe some random random stuff. Just get to know other people of, of the course staff, maybe me personally. And yeah, office stars are on our website. Like join the office stars if you need help with any any homework question or like maybe just knowing about more about the decal or or, or the club. The physics building is a bird shawl. Um, I'm not sure. Basically, physics building is the one built behind Campanelli. If you look at Campanelli from maybe the lower side of the landscape, it's it's behind Campanelli. Uh, yeah. You can actually put it up on Google Maps to show you where physics building is. When you enter the physics building and the room on the right is the, I think room on the left or the right is, is physics floor. There are only two rooms. It's one of them. Yeah. When will be added? Yeah. So you, I think, I think you should be added like me by tomorrow. Uh, hopefully end of this week maximum. We just waited for the drop deadline, which is today to pass. We, we just waiting for the drop deadline to pass so that like we can then give up the grid scope code for everyone to join. Oh, why can't I see line break? You should be able to see the line break because I think, I don't know, it might be different error on your side. You can try HR tag to check if that's working or not because that's easily visible. Uh,
Yeah, so. Um, Yeah, so metadata is basically all the things that don't get displayed on the website. Uh, and it's uh, maybe things like keywords that you want to that, that you want to have in your website from the back end, or keywords as in like uh, search when like when you want to like improve your search engine optimization, basically, which is that you want your website to be on top of other websites when like a particular keyword is searched. For example, we maybe the web web at Berkeley website has web or, or Berkeley in, in their keywords section of the metadata so that they can have like a better SEO optimal like better SEO. Apart from that, metadata can like uh, like, like common stuff would be CSS style sheets when you're when you're uh, inputting like CSS style sheets because like you, know, you can although uh, like have in inline stuff in inline styling in your HTML, but like the preferred way and like especially for like when when you start making bigger websites, you make a different file with with the dot CSS extension. So when you want to input that to so that like the so that they can apply it to like multiple ele elements of the HTML file, you even that goes into the metadata, uh, the whole style sheets link. All right. Are there any other questions like that people may have? If not, feel free to leave. Um, oh yeah, I mean like yeah. So yeah, title does get displayed like in a sense, but like you do understand like the whole overarching point, right? I mean the metadata is not like the the gist or like it's it's not like the meat of the whole website yeah so like the title does get displayed yeah, I mean, like, that's true you're welcome cool um mike do you have any questions mike? yeah I think it's just like, yeah. All right. If not, it's all good. We can end the recording here and um, see you next time.